I'm one of the founders of one of the most influential and legendary hip hop groups uh, ever, uh, Public Enemy. We have one critical than that in reference to raising the conscious level of our people. I'm just mm-hmm. your brother, but nonetheless, a researcher and an author, um, mainly not by my choice. A lecturer, definitely not by my choice. Um, a okay. brother that's putting, okay. disseminating, disseminating information to young people to raise the conscious level of our people, not by my choice. I tell people all the time that the music industry chose me, and I'm glad it did, simply because I definitely had something to say, but was in search of a medium to say it through. Okay. Here comes, okay. here comes my childhood friend, Chuck D. <laughs> so mm-hmm. he came and talked about this idea that, and kept telling me that, uh, Def Jam and some people at Def Jam are looking to sign him, but he don't want to do the Chuck D show. <laughs> okay. So he always knew okay. that I was organizing. He already knew I had an army. He already knew these things about me. So when we joined forces along with Hank Shockley, Keith Shockley, Eric Sadler, which is the bomb squad. I brought mm-hmm. the brothers that I've always soldiered with, and we called them the S1Ws. Then when I went right. out to find Terminator X, it was originally Keith Shockley, and then uh, some couple of things went down, and we ended up finding... Norman Rogers, who people know as Terminator X, and that formed the group um, Public Enemy. And the significant thing about Public Enemy setting itself aside from just being a normal, regular old hip-hop group um, was the fact that we decided to raise the conscience level of our people by any, every, and all means necessary. Yeah, re- re- repeat that again. Those of us that was responsible for mm-hmm. cleaning the lens that young people viewed reality through Yes. When we didn't clean the lens to the degree where we seen this day coming, then mm-hmm. it posed a problem at the same time, um, at the same time the powers that be neutralized conscious hip hop and it posed a very severe problem simply because that consciousness was no longer there to check the evils that were going on in hip hop. Yeah. As Dell Jones teaches us in his book The Culture Bandits. Mm-hmm. Yep, you're right about that. So even, yep. even though even though you had a group like two live crew on the scene, nonetheless you had positive groups, Brand Newbie and KRS One and other brothers exactly. and sisters on the scene that neutralized that kind of thing and, and there was checks and balances. Now mm-hmm. there's no checks and balances. Everybody right. wanna be Jay Z, everybody wanna be Rick Ross, everybody mm-hmm. wanna be Beyonce, everybody wanna be Nicki Minaj. And it's the mm-hmm. same vibration. And back in the day, we took pride in being different. Now they exactly. take pride in being just the same. Hey, Griff, is that you? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, that sounds clear. Okay, good, good. All right, so, um, yeah, we were talking about the consciousness in the early 90s and, and, and how we see the difference in the marketing of uh, really ignorance uh, today. In, uh, when we come to hip hop, the death of the hip hop Illuminati, the ascension of the ancient art forms. Okay, so right, right. right, right away, you already had the attention of a lot of people. Because before you called in, we just had a sister who called in asking about, you know, am I going to do a presentation dealing with the history of the Illuminati? So tell us, what are you going to discuss in the, in this presentation? Well, in a nutshell, to give you bullet points, I'm going to deal with the, the Illuminati, who and exactly who the Illuminati is, what is, what the overall goal and purpose of the Illuminati, and then why is it that we're finding um, the signs and symbols of the Illuminati and other secret societies in hip-hop and in popular entertainment and popular culture. We have to deal with that simply because there would be no need to even mention the Illuminati if it wasn't affecting our everyday life. We're going to deal with Correct. racism and how it affects hip-hop and then some of the end results. We're going to deal with vibrations and frequencies. We have to go into some metaphysics in order to get to people to understand um, the psychic war that's being waged against us without us even knowing. Talk about silent sound and, and, um, and different and sound and different weapons, acoustic weapons that they're using to attack our energy centers. So we have mm. to uncover who these Illuminati. So we have to cover some, uh, go over who are the agents of the Illuminati that are operating inside of hip-hop, uh, i.e. Puffy, Jay-Z, and a few other people. We have to uh, uncover and lay out the agenda on how to combat this stuff as, as, as being solution-oriented. We have, to, okay. we have to go over these things. And um, it, it's, it's very critical that we talk about these things, even right up to date, 
even right up to today, when we when we look at the uh, the Republican National Convention on TV, I believe it's on TV right now. The language yep. that they're using. Let's talk talk mm-hmm. about the the um the uh, the crime bill and and some of the things that the president uh, is putting in place that's going to affect young people at a at a latter date. You understand what I'm saying? We have to take we have mm-hmm. to talk about the culture bandits that came in and just commandeered and took over hip hop. Right, we right, have to talk exactly. about how hip hop is a, a multi billion dollar industry, but you don't see black people making the billions of dollars. Correct, correct. The corporate we conglomerates need to talk came about, in and took it over. Me? <laughs> the corporate exactly. conglomerates came in and took it over. Yep. Go ahead, brother. Right. We need to talk about the corporate control of the media, of the news, mm-hmm. and how mm-hmm. it affects us. We have to talk mm-hmm. about um, all of the black talent, but the white wealth. Right. Right. Right, so there's exactly. quite a bit of things that, that we have to that we have to cover, and um, hopefully we'll have enough time um, to cover it all and, and lay it out the way it should be, the way it should be laid out. Mm-hmm. Okay, excellent, right. excellent. Now, now also you're going to talk about resurrecting the modern day Osiris or Asar, as as, as the ancient Kemetic people called them, awakening the art forms that lie within us. Now, now, now tell us tell us about that. What we're going to do, we're going to go back and reawaken and re, uh, reascend those particular uh, ancient art forms that we used to use in, for mm-hmm. celebrations, for festivals, for rituals, and this kind of thing. These were the things that kept us alive as a people, always having our culture intact. In, in so a lot mm-hmm. of times if the people don't know them and they're not familiar with them, we can't exercise them and extract the energy and the power that our ancestors extracted from them. So we need to mm. we need this reascension of the ancient art forms, but we have to know what the ancient art forms are. Right. So we're going right. to discuss that, and we're going to connect it right to ancient Kemet. We're going to connect it to the Dogon. We're going to connect it to various different tribes in various different places on the continent. And, and I don't I don't I don't, I don't I don't really I don't really want to talk about Beyonce personally speaking. Oh, um, okay. When you say as when you say as bad as that kind of language is really disturbing simply because that's like saying. Okay, but that snake is bad, but that snake ain't as bad as that snake. But both mm-hmm. of the damn I snakes will bite that. you. <laughs> mm-hmm. You understand, understand what I'm that. saying? We can mm-hmm. only we can only talk about uh, Beyonce and some of these particular things in the context of actually teaching and showing the people what we mean. Mm-hmm. To have a conversation about it, we don't want to have the people, especially young people, think that we're talking about people. You understand what oh, I'm saying? Sure, if sure, we laid sure. out if we laid out the agenda and showed them, listen, this is the effect of what this individual is doing, and here is the result of that. Mm-hmm. You following sure. me? So totally then we get that. to the point where is the is the behavior of that particular individual conducive um, to the elevation of our consciousness? And then if it's right. not, let's figure out some solutions to counteract it. I don't care if we have to ostracize her or whatever it is that we have to do. Right. It's the behavior right. that we're focusing in on. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. and I totally understand that. Yeah, cause I, and I wasn't trying to attack her or anything like that. Um, no, 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 I understand. Uh, yeah, right, right. So, See, yeah, I, totally I, understand. I understand, but but the 14-year-old listening may not understand that. Mm-hmm, exactly, exactly. You're following me. And what we want to sure. do is give the 14-year-old mom and dad um, at least – um, an idea on how to bridge the gap and have that conversation with their 14 and 15 year old. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So if, I, if, exactly. I, if, I, if I have a situation where my daughter is dancing or, or listening to uh, Beyonce, I let her listen to it, but at the end of that song, we got to talk. <laughs> See, but that right, presents right. a teaching moment. Exactly. Exactly. Therein totally lies the that. teaching moment. Now I have a way right. in. I'm like, cool, let's talk. What would what would you say would be the uh, minimum age of say a youth who you would say come to the to the to the presentation? No disrespect to you and anyone else, the parents that are listening. What is the minimum age where we got we got little ones twerking? What's mm-hmm. the minimum age that you could go up on YouTube and see seeing young girls taking off their clothes? What's the minimum mm-hmm. age where they start cursing and using foul language in a disrespectful way to one another and to their parents? What's the minimum age that people are gunning people down in the streets in uh, Detroit, Highland Park, and right. other places? What is right. that minimum okay, age? So all and then, that, then that's what we need to talk to. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. And oh, I totally I'm, I'm glad it's going to be – excuse me? I said I totally understand. 
Totally understand. So I'm glad it's going to be in an environment where we can really talk to people. Because a right, lot of times, exactly. if you don't speak young people's language, you ain't reaching them. Like, right. you're going to a Mexican speaking Italian. He's, I don't understand what you're talking about. Calling 757, are you there? Oh, 757? Yes, yes. Did you have a question or comment? Okay. So you want to know, uh, I, I'll relay the question to you because you still sound like you're a million miles away. So you want to know, yeah. uh, what, what, what can we do about the police killing our youth? Is that your question, Sheba? Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. So just stand by. He, he's going to answer that question for you. Okay, sister? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. She she just sounds like she's a million miles away. She wants to reach out and touch somebody. So she wants to know what right. can we do <laughs> about the about police killing killing our youth, bro? Because it seems like every other day you hear something, and when when, when something happens, you know, I I don't want to just uh, react. I I, I want to look. I want to look into it and see what the facts are. You know what I mean? Before I just start repeating things and don't have the right information. But 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 what can we do about this? I think what we what we need to do is uh, all of the parents probably need to pull their sons and daughters in. And if we've never done it ever in our lives, we need to do it now. We need to have that talk about what do you do when you're caught behind enemy lines? What does that yes. mean? That means when yes. I was with my son and the police pulled us over, I mm -hmm. said, now this is another teaching moment. This is yes. how you conduct yourself. You understand what I'm saying? Because Correct. wouldn't it be better to know how to conduct yourself once these once they roll up on you and you caught the mm -hmm. blue light hit you? You understand what I'm saying? You're already Correct. nervous. The blue light they special. already got an itchy right. trigger finger. You understand what I'm saying? They right. already see you as a threat to their their mm -hmm. whole genetical structure. <laughs> you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? As Dr. Francis Cress Wilson puts it, we we black men we carry around a weapon that they that they subconsciously fear. Correct. So if, Correct. if that's what they're thinking already, then don't give them a reason to deal with you in a very hostile and violent way. We need to give our young brothers some classes to say, listen, Correct. this is what this is. This is what this looked like. This is the mm -hmm. history of this particular thing. All right? I tell, right. I tell my son, when you get caught behind the enemy lines, only thing you should give this police officer, answer his questions, short sentences, and yes, sir, and no, sir, at the beginning and ending of your answers. You understand what I'm saying? Correct, correct, correct. Don't, you, yeah. don't have to give, you don't have to give them anything else. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, young people look at that like, oh, you being a punk. No, you're right. not being a punk. You want to leave that particular situation alive to live another day. Correct. You're right about that, brother. Cause, uh, and oh. and I, I've talked about this before, you know, and uh, uh, I would encourage people um, – you know, uh, Dr. Ray Hagens has a four-part series dealing with keeping our children out of the criminal justice system. Right. And he deals, he deals with how to teach our children how to interact with law enforcement. But he has a four-part series that deals with this. And a lot of, a lot of, our, a lot of our youth, uh, let, me, let me give you an example, man. Here in uh, Warren, Michigan, which is a suburb of Detroit, I think it was in Warren, you had a situation a couple of years ago where a car was stopped by the police. I forgot, I forgot what happened. I can't, I can't remember if they were speeding or what have you, but a car was stopped by the police. He had some young brothers in there. But a young brother who was about 16 got out the car and started running. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, he didn't do anything wrong. He was just scared. The police didn't know that he didn't do anything. He started running. So what they do, they ran after him, right? Mm -hmm. so, they, so they catch him and they tase him, okay? Mm -hmm. And they didn't repeatedly tase him, if I remember correctly. They didn't repeatedly tase him. They tased him. And uh, if I remember correctly, I think he had, like, asthma or something like that. But he ended up dying from being tased. Mm -hmm. But he was innocent, but he didn't understand how to interact with police officers. So they pull him over. He, he jumps out the car and starts running. Right. Okay, so, so this is something, and, and a lot of these things, I, now, first of all, let me preface this because I don't want people calling in acting crazy. I do know that police brutality does exist. Okay, I, I totally understand that. But some of these situations can be avoided if our, if our youth know how to interact with police. Okay. Right, right, right. So, you know, and the goal is to keep them coming. See, see the court, and, and, and the goal is for them to come home in one piece unharmed. Okay. Certain things, 
we need to address in the court system. If we're going to go that way, we need to address in the court system. But the scene of the crime, the scene, the scene, not the crime, but the, on the scene with the police officer, that's not the time to argue your point. Okay. Right. And, 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 and that's where a lot of them get caught up. Okay. So, right. so, you know, so, Hey brother. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go back to the, uh, to the phone line. So hopefully that helped you there, Sheba. Uh, let's go to the, Two six nine. Calling us two six nine. Welcome to the African History Network show. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Uh, peace, brothers. Uh, my name is Matt Two. Calling out of Michigan. Michigan. Okay, brother. Okay. What, what's your name again? Yeah, I'm Matt Two. Matt Two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go. Go ahead, uh, brother. Yeah, I want to, you know, feel like raise the raise the bar just a little bit with you two brothers. Uh, you know, now as it relates to you know, uncovering conspiracy theories in hip hop. Mm-hmm. You know, and, you know, just uncovering conspiracy theories in general inside mm-hmm. of another man's culture. Mm-hmm. How does that relate to building a, a new Pan African order? Okay. Did you understand the question there, Griff? Oh, I understand it exactly. Okay, go ahead. And that's and I think he's in, he's misinformed. That's not what I do. Okay. I clearly, I clearly talk about the psychological covert war on hip hop. Mm-hmm. So regardless of what another man is doing in his culture, why is that spilling over into the culture of hip hop? And we're playing it out as though we're the originators of it. Mm. Why is that? For example. If the movie Scarface came out, right? Mm-hmm. Why did shortly after the movie gang violence uh, on the rise? Why did people take the name, action, the vibration, the spirit of Tony Montana? Why were they selling the poster at the mall? You understand what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So, right. Yeah, the people that were, that that came and and took us and brought us to America, and we're vibrating with this alien culture. It seems like the worst of their culture. We're taking it now and we're making it part of our culture. Which is sad. Correct. So whether he has conspiracy theories in and out of his culture, that's one thing. And what that brother just said, that's correct. But when we see it spilling over into our our house, then there's a problem. One last example. If you live mm-hmm. in an apartment building or a townhouse and it's connected to someone else's house, for the most part, you mind your business because that's not your house. But if the mm-hmm. person next to you got roaches and you starting to see roaches in your house, and now you got to go knock on the door next door, right or wrong? Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's good Yeah. <laughs> well, I think so, let, me, let me let me follow up just a little bit. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I think that that's I mean that, that example is just a little bit, Griff. That's a little shallow in this sense. If the African American, this is what I believe: the African American in general, the European has the patent on him meaning he created it. And right. so even the art form of hip-hop, right, that may have came out of organically out of Africans in America or wherever, it's that mm-hmm. culture's responsibility at, if it sees hip-hop as a threat, it's that culture's responsibility to jump on top of that, to subjugate it, to change it, to make it what it wants to be. So that shouldn't be surprising that the European has taken hip hop inside of his culture, he sees it as a threat and does that to it. I mean that that shouldn't be a surprise to us. Okay, you're right. But how is my answer shallow? <laughs> huh? If I if I why is my answer shallow? If you you're correct, but but why is my answer shallow? If I've spent the last seven to eight years um informing people and waking people up as to what is going on, mm-hmm. right? It, how is it, that shallow? I, I don't it, I don't get and it. Let, let me give you an example. If, like you said, we need to tell our young daughters about Beyonce and, you know, the young boys about Jay-Z, but it's almost like when you're doing a mentoring program, right, getting young brothers to stop selling dope. Well, when you change two, the culture is producing 10 to take its place. So when you raise a young sister or young brother to the consciousness about the Illuminati and hip hop, and now they've come aware. But there's ten more that's getting ready to walk. In. How do you win that game? Oh, we could win that. We could win that easy. And I and I demonstrated in my life 
how we went. When Public Enemy, when we came on the scene, there was a whole bunch of stuff going on. We neutralized that quick. We mm. neutralized that in a matter of a few years, bro. We changed the whole landscape of hip hop. I'm not trying to toot my own horn. You understand what I'm saying? But right, you couldn't right. even deny. I don't. I don't even care if you didn't like Public Enemy. You felt the effect because you mm-hmm. see brothers taking off the fake Dookie uh, gold, putting on African right. medallions. You heard the vibration in the music change. Here you you go. see yeah. people going to school. You see the enrollment in college and black organizations rose. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? The consciousness was totally changed when Public Enemy was on the scene with the golden era of hip-hop. It's all yeah. living proof. Well, I know right. as an individual. Okay, I'll, I'll let you guys take some more calls, but i just I just say this. I think, and, uh, you know, I, I know you, Griff. Uh, you know, I've, I've met you and stuff like that, and I've been to your lectures and stuff. I, I think what we got to do, brothers, though, we, we do need to raise this bar of what we're informing the people about. And to me, if we can't practically relate that to rebuilding a global African order, I think we're marking time. You're okay. absolutely correct. That maybe that's not Professor Griff that has to do that. That's maybe true. that's you that's that have to do that. Yeah, that's true. No, we give, no, we right. got to do it, not just me. You <laughs> because right. I think no, no, you no, have you, so much. You, you, you play like, role. Yeah, it just sounded like Griff. you might want to be the one to lead the charge. And you know something, bro? Shit, I don't mind. Meet me on the front right. line. I don't mind you leading right. the charge, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I okay. mean, I just. But you have, you have, you have, you have a lot of influence, you know, in 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 what you do in this side. Most of my work is done on the continent, so okay. You know that that's what right. I mean. We, we because you you do have the influence over here. I mean, I'm clear where the work should be being done at. It's on the continent, as far as I'm concerned. And mm-hmm. I think okay, you because you have these people's ear. You 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 gotta you gotta send them in a direction, other than saying just let's uncover this conspiracy. Like Amos Wilson said, he said the reason I never deal in conspiracies is because hell, once you find out about it, it's too late anyway. Shit is done. Okay, but what does that have to do with me though? I am fifty two years old. I've been teaching before so many people were born. You understand what I'm saying? Right. This is not the only thing that I taught I or teach. Okay. Right. right. Now, right. you may right. be looking at a few right. YouTube clips and you're summing me up like, oh, this is some shallow ass bullshit he's no, talking no, no. about. <laughs> Griff, I know you, brother. I met you. I mean, I know you. I know you. I mean, I'm, nah. not, I'm, not, I'm not making light of you. That's, I, I definitely don't want to feel like I'm doing that before I get off. I'm going to get off the phone, but I definitely want to do that, Griff. I'm not making light of the work that you do. It's very important, brother. But I just, I just thought I'd throw that out there. You know, you, you know take it or leave it. You okay. Just don't right. leave it, bro. All right. Uh, all right. All right, bro. Thanks for calling in. Okay. Hopefully you can make it to the lecture, man. Hopefully you can make it to the lecture. He's in uh, Michigan. So uh, he's in our state. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, everybody has well, let, me, let me tell you what. Let me tell you what ends up happening to me. Um, I okay. end up people just now discovering who Professor Grip is for the yes. fourth time. <laughs> and um, I end up getting put in an Illuminati box. So now when somebody yeah. see me on the bus or the train, oh, that's that dude to be talking about the Illuminati. Right, right. That's only one. Uh, yeah. That's only how, one how, thing. About, how about 20 years ago? You understand what I'm saying? How about before right. Public Enemy? How about during right. Public Enemy? How about mm-hmm. how about the um, the nine albums I have out in the 17 projects that I've done with Public Enemy? How about all the other things that were said and done? How about you know the brothers and sisters that are probably listening to this broadcast, right? How about the ones that I helped through through college? I don't care if it's a term paper. I don't care if it's paying for a test. I don't care if it's putting money on the books for brothers in prison. I don't care if it's taking um, children around the country that call me Uncle Griff to baseball and basketball games. You know, this is a this is a a, a big gigantic work. You know what I'm saying? Correct. And guess what? Right. I don't mind if somebody come help. <laughs> right. My thing exactly. is, I've seen something going on in hip hop. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, and just to, mm-hmm. just to, uh. Just to speak to what that brother was saying, we lost a good brother today, Chris Lighty. He murdered his son, he killed himself, shot mm-hmm. him for some madness, right. that was some domestic madness that was going on. And then not only the domestic madness that was going on, some madness that was going on in the music industry. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? These are the right. things that I'm trying to avoid. Maybe what the brother was talking about is a different aspect 
of our mission. Right, right, exactly. Now, and, I, don't and one thing... brother, I, don't, I don't know if the brother knows it or not, but, you know, them, the Alphabet Boys came to visit me and um, b- brought me in, sat me down, the whole interrogation um, in a different country. You understand? And mm. took my damn passport. So when you talk about he's doing work on the continent, maybe that's his path. That's not my path. <laughs> okay. So you say they took your passport. Oh, they did a whole bunch of things. That, other than my house burned it, they burned my house down and all this kind of madness. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, so it's a yeah, lot that's... deeper than, it's a lot deeper than somebody watching a YouTube clip and summing me up, you know, some conspiracy theory. Nah, I'm right. well awake and well aware of what I'm supposed to be doing. Exactly, exactly. And, and, and one thing that I try to explain to people is that we all have a role to play in this. So his role may not be exactly what your role is. Your role may not be right. exactly his role. You know, this is this is a team sport, not an individual sport. This is football, not golf. Everybody can't be the quarterback, okay? Oh, so, I, I would like for him to be the quarterback. Sure, I'll follow the brother. The brother sound like he got it together. Sure, I, I'll take right. the orders. I'm good. <laughs> I know how to be a soldier. Right, exactly. You know how to exactly. be a soldier. I've been a soldier all my life. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right, right. But I, I don't, I don't like, I, don't just, I just don't like to be summed up and made to seem like I'm shallow. Right. You, you understand what I'm saying? Understand. That's oh, just, I totally that's understand really that, brother. to me, personally speaking. But anyway, go ahead. I, totally I don't wear my sensitivity on my sleeve. Go ahead. <laughs> all right. Let's go, let's go quickly to the 248. This is somebody from the uh, Detroit area. Let's go to the 248. Call in the 248. Hello, this is Natalie, um, 248, but I was born and raised in Detroit, and I saw you Saturday, and I saw you at the African World Festival, and I was very amazed. Had the two little boys. Oh, yeah, yeah. How you doing, Natalie? Yeah, right. yep. so I'm my first time on the call. And I wanted, first I wanted to uh, speak to the brother that was on, just uh, just hung up. So, mm-hmm. um, this is just quickly a little story. He said, how can we help? It's not about... Helping you, me not, it's not your role to help everybody in the world. That's un, you know, unfeasible. But the story I've heard from one of my wise teachers, like a man was on the uh, beach and he was throwing, you know, throwing things back in the ocean. And then the man walked up to him and said, like, well, how can you, you know, what, what, how are you making a difference? What, you know, how can you make a difference? And he said, you know what, it doesn't matter if I make a difference to all of them, but this one here, it matters to him as a story of a starfish. But, you know, if you help that oh, one person or, you know, whoever uh, you touch or you're called to touch, then, you know, that's your role. You fulfilled your um, your job that you came here to do. And right. I, wanted, exactly. <laughs> I wanted to speak about now I've learned a lot with you. I've been, you know, a metaphys- metaphysical teacher or a student for a long time now. And real, you talked about the subconscious level, you know, of thinking how different things are ingrained from you through youth and through, you know, past experience and things. And waking people up, like, you know, I woke up several years back and, you know, realized, you know, who I was and the power that I have. And now I'm on my journey to realize who I am as an African-American woman, with learning with you. And, you know, and I'm going to be at the seminar that um, is going to be next Saturday as well. Um, when we, um, my thing is when we wake people up, when people, every, everybody's going to wake up on their own level and their own timing, when they wake up, then where are the two? The tools need to be put in place so they can know and realize on the deepest level who they really are, so they can go out and do the things that they were called to do, and do the gifts and talents that they were, that were instilled with them in them since birth. So that's, right. that's why I'm like, wait, okay, wake up, and then okay, now what do I do? Just back when we go back to when slavery was abolished, then okay, you have this, but what do you do with it? So I'm just on that, you know, mindset. How do we give them the, you know, give people the tools they need or help them, you know, because when you have that slave mentality and that mindset that was ingrained in you, you know, about, you know, how different things are really put into your subconscious mind from media, from family, from, you know, because your parents, you know, teach you what they were taught, you know, if they weren't awake and aware, they did the best they could. So I'm like on that mindset, like, how are we going to put put in place? You know, I know that's part of my calling, but I'm still trying to, I'm still in work in progress. So, you know, how are we going to give them the tools they to need that to out. advance? Yes. yes. So mm-hmm. that's why I'm, where I'm at in my growth stage. But I really, you know, I'm really impressing. You see, I keep coming back, coming to the calls, coming to the right. to your classes and things. So I'm really, like, i got that sponge for, sponge for knowledge, and I'm really learning a new area now. You know, I've learned okay. a lot since I've been coming. All right. Well, you, so you, you, get, you, get to meet them, uh, <laughs> you get to meet them Saturday, September 8th, 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Okay. at Nandy's Knowledge Cafe. I will All be right. there. Okay, no problem. All right, thanks for calling in, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Um, 
Let me see here. Let's, uh, I think we have one more call and try to get in. Uh, oh, man, okay. All right, got more. Okay. Got a couple more trying to get in because uh, we're, we're going to let you go right before the top of the hour, Griff. Okay, is that, is that okay, brother? That's cool. Okay. Uh, we got somebody in the 313. So let's go to the uh, 313. Quick, everybody wants to talk to Griff. I had one thing I wanted to uh, to address, uh, too. And uh, another thing is a lot of people try to say that the, the music artists who are, are have, like, the real big names, they try to uh, say that they're, they're the main Illuminati people. And I try to tell people that they're they're not. They're, they're, many of them are puppets controlled by the people who own and run the record labels. Then you have sometimes people even above them. So there's a pecking order to this, and I think that needs to be brought up and uh, more education in that regard needs to be brought about because like the uh, many of us are familiar with the Rockefeller family, but a lot of people are not aware that the Rockefeller family when um, former movie producer Aaron Russo uh, met mm-hmm. Nick Rockefeller some years back when he was running for governor of Nevada, Nick Rockefeller shared with him, uh, he said, do you know who funded the Women's Liberation Movement? And he said, our family did that. And they purposely knew that they were, they were going to break apart black households because a woman could not receive assistance if she had a man living in a household. So that was very devious. It's very wicked. So we people need to also be aware of who the controllers are in the system. And I just wanted to add, I think this needs to be brought about because these people try to play like the good guys, like they're the saviors. They want to help us out like Bill Gates right. and these different people. But, uh, you, you know, from Alex Jones uh, and many other scholars out there all across the board that these people uh, have a, a darker agenda. They're trying to issue us into a, a dark age, and they're using technology and many other things. And our people need to really be made aware that it's not going to just start stop where where we're at. But these people plan on uh, using weapons and and things, just like the movie I Robot with Will Smith. Uh, they plan on have tech, advanced technology, uh, secret government facilities, and. Uh, just to share, I was listening to uh, Griff earlier, what he said. I've also been threatened before. I used to have the 911 was an inside job bumper stick on the back of my car. I took it off. The reason why was to be to try to be more covert because a friend of mine said, yeah, you you got to saw a hot out here, man, you know. And, and I mean, I had people calling me up, uh, but I, I was confident. This one time I, I had a guy, He uh, I, I asked him to identify himself, and then, I said, uh, I told him, I said, don't call this effing phone no more. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, this war is on. I don't like what these people are doing. And I just right. think if, if our young people, like you all brought up earlier, the, it doesn't matter because if the, if, like, if the young children, the girls and stuff, they're shaking their ass, they're wearing earrings, they're tattooing their bodies, they don't know how to speak to the police, it, it's hindering them in the professional world. They need to be taught and educated what we're dealing with, we're dealing with a very vicious beast. These families, not just the Rockefeller family, but the two parts, they use corporations, foundations, and nonprofit organizations and disguise them as they're doing philanthropy or good work, but not all of them have good intentions. Many right. of them are right. working for the dark side, and I just wanted to bring that out. That's who the real Illuminati are, but they're using people like Jay-Z, who's a Freemason, uh, Beyonce, people like that to indoctrinate the young people when they put subliminal messages in these songs, of course, which you guys I know are already familiar with in like like Donna mm-hmm. and when they when when people get starstruck when they recruit these other music artists and these entertainers who uh like Bill what's the name, Brad Pitts and uh Angelina Joe Lee. People like right. that are used to, to carry out their agenda, and people need to be aware of that, like why Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt, and Angelina Jolie adopt black children is so they can groom them and, and indoctrinate them so when these children come of age, just like Oprah Winfrey started right. the school for girls in Africa, when those girls reach a certain age, they might become heads of state or like the next Michelle or Barack Obama. So we need to be aware of that. See, these people... Are, are so devious and evil. They've been planning this for centuries back. The Huxley family, the Rockefellers, the right. Rothschilds, and and hey, I just think that needs to be interjected. Let, let me see if Chris uh, has. Just, a, let me see if Chris has a response first, man. Because you, you just, oh just like, no, nah, that 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 wasn't even a question, man. I, I, yeah. Right, I know. <laughs> I know. I I know. know okay, we got at. a question. I just wanted to ask Griff uh, when he was here. Uh, he didn't touch on Whitney Houston. I was wondering, was Whitney Houston?
Houston murdered, or or was or was that just uh, well, an incident well, with I the fields? And- well, I think. Well, I think you might probably came late to the lecture because I said <laughs> to the people um, that I was um, at least giving Whitney Houston's family time to mourn Whitney Houston's death. You understand? Mm-hmm. Anything that I, I would have put out there, people could have took it on YouTube and upset the family and this kind of thing. Like, I'm not going to speak on Chris Lighty's uh, suicide in depth. You understand what I'm saying? So there's just certain right, things right. you can't say at certain Give times. Period. That Give comes with, listen, period. listen, listen. That comes mm-hmm. with maturity, bro. Right. Exactly. right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Mm-hmm. Just certain things you can't do. Any, everything that we hear, we can't just start running off our mouths. You know what I'm saying? Right. saying? And the history and the information that you just laid out, if you go on YouTube and check out some of my uh, lectures, I deal with that stuff very, very intensely. I mean, like, I mean, to the point where I name the families, go through the history, name the names, name the corporations, see what they control. So, I, you know, that stuff is being done. Mm-hmm. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. And, and it, exactly. I notice a lot of young people just focus on just the entertainers, the people at the lower level, like Young Jeezy, Rick Ross, and those right. type of people. But we need to be asking, like KRS once said in the movie Obama Deception, who are the people controlling and running these people that are running these corporations? The young people, I notice when people are made aware of who's doing what, like the Rockefellers are are are, are funding vaccinations to to murder people with, or Bill Gates, like he murdered the, the children in India. That's the information mm-hmm. that people need, and, and it also paper. And let's see, Griff, how can people get your, uh, if people want to get, like, your DVDs and your books, how can people do that? Um, they can go to my, and order the stuff from my site, which is www.pgriff.info, or they, they can get it from my site, man. It's, it's, it's there. Okay. 